It's Thursday, March 21st, 2024. A lot to talk about today. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, hit that bell notification down below. Share these videos all over the place, all over your social media. But enough of that. Let's get right into what is going on. The market euphoria continues. The super bubbles continue to be inflated. Uh, some of the comments last night said that this is what happened right before the 1929 crash, and I could not agree more. And this is not going to be similar to 2008. No, no. This is going to be much worse. This is going to be compared uh, in the history books to 1929, but it, be, but it will be worse than 1929. This is going to be a really, really bad crash. And people are, are just giddy with the euphoria, drunk on euphoria out there with what the markets are doing, which it's based on absolutely nothing. Um, it's not based on a booming economy. It's not based on uh, incredible jobs and manufacturing. No, it's all based on artificial injections. It's based on the hope that the Fed's going to cut rates. That's what all this is based on. It's all fake, ladies and gentlemen. When this thing goes down, it is going to be a disaster. It is going to be one that is going to go down in the history books without a doubt. But nonetheless, Dow Jones up 268 today, NASDAQ up 32, and gold sitting very, very close to 2200. And of course, somebody will say, oh, I, I, I'm just mad when the market goes up. No, I'm mad that the markets are a big lie that the markets are fake, that it's all been built up with artificial injections. It's all built up with hearsay and talk. It's all based on rate cuts. It's all based on cheap money and money printing and quantitative easing. Uh, Mortgage-backed securities being bought up by the Fed, the Fed buying bonds, the Fed buying stocks. It's all fake. That's not a real market. Uh, I would be more than happy to, to, to be euphoric over a real market that was going up uh, on real principles and having a real foundation, um, but this is completely fake. This is a, a, a house of cards built on quicksand. There is nothing real in these markets. And a lot of people may be rich on paper today, but I hope that they get out before everything comes down. And while the markets are going up today, you should all be aware of what is happening because the markets ignore reality. They're ignoring a collapsing economy. They're ignoring a hurting consumer, not a resilient consumer. Uh, they're ignoring all the all the layoffs. They're ignoring all the, the small businesses that are going out of business. And they're ignoring this. 32 Chinese warplanes buzz around Taiwan in just 24 hours. The second highest number this year after the island nation admitted, admitted to stationing U.S. troops. What in the world is going on and why... Uh, is the market not reflecting anything about this? U.S. troops are one mile from the Chinese border, according to the economiccollapse.com. Daily Mail reported the 32 Chinese warplanes buzzing around Taiwan. Now, I've got to ask all of you this, and, and please comment down below. Uh, what in the world are we doing? Our military is shrinking. Our resources are stretched way too thin. We're a bankrupt nation. We owe $34 trillion in debt and climbing, um, over 200 with unfunded liabilities, over $200 trillion of debt, including unfunded liabilities. The U.S. has military bases in 80 countries, and we have troops stationed in 178 different countries. Our ammunition levels are extremely low. Why? Because uh, we're giving it all to Ukraine. We're, we're, we're giving it all uh, to the Middle East. And while we're doing all this, we've depleted our oil reserves, our strategic petroleum reserves. Um, and what, what, what are we doing? We're provoking China now, a, a country that we are severely reliant on for pharmaceuticals and cheap goods and aluminum and plastics and you name it, literally everything. But we just keep provoking. But Taiwan officials have today have claimed that the U.S., uh, that U.S. soldiers, U.S. forces are now stationed in Taiwan. That is scary. We are not going to win this war if it escalates. There is no way. We are broke. Uh, the morale in the military is broken. Uh, our resources, we just, we, we just will not win. And you think about how, how much this could escalate, bringing in Russia, Iran, and many other countries, um, and you've got to ask yourself, would you send your kid to Taiwan? Many of you 
would, would not send your kids to Ukraine? How many would send your kids to Taiwan? And we keep provoking and provoking as a bankrupt nation. We're bankrupt morally. We're bank bankrupt financially. This is a war we will never, never win. And what country can be in multiple wars and win? It's never happened ever to be uh, to, to literally be in two wars in Ukraine and Middle East and then a third one uh, in Taiwan with China. And these are wars with major superpowers. This is not Iraq. This is not Libya, ladies and gentlemen. We are talking Iran. We're talking Russia. We're talking China. Nuclear superpowers. Um, huge militaries. So I am a bit concerned about uh, what is taking place right now. Uh, we are so stretched. We are not prepared for this. I, I just think that we have this mentality that, oh, we're America. Nothing can ever stop us. Nothing uh, can, can stop the dollar. Our economy can never collapse. We can never win a war, even though we've never won a war since World War II. That's a fact. And now um, we're provoking wars with major nuclear adversaries. Comment down below. We literally have a war going on right here on U.S. soil now. Uh, this was on the New York Post today. Over 100 migrants break through razor wire, knock down guards as they illegally cross El Paso border in Wild Scene. Uh, this video, if you get a chance, uh, you can Google it. Just Google migrants break through uh, razor wire or uh, break into El Paso border. It's all over the place or just go to the New York Post. Very disturbing video. But they got through the first... Uh, crossing there, the, 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 the uh, first part of, of the uh, chain link fencing and ra razor wire. They got through that, uh, but then they came to a second uh, area, a, a bigger fenced area, and you had some guards drawing weapons. And so I don't know what's going on at this point. They, they got through the first barrier, made it to the second. I don't think they got past that, but they assaulted uh, our, our, our soldiers, knocking them down, and then chanting and yelling, we're hungry. So this is absolutely getting out of control. And now we're talking about possibly a war with China and being and having U.S. soldiers right now over in Taiwan. This is absolutely, uh, uh, absolutely out of control and ext extremely dangerous for all of us and, and for this country. Migrant TikToker tells other newcomers how to invade homes in America. You talk about, you, you know, uh, I'm watching Kevin O'Leary last night on ITM Trading. And, you know, he's uh, really been uh, very upfront about doing business in New York and, you know, the uh, uh, possibility that, you know, something goes wrong, that they can basically seize your assets or seize your property in New York. And now, People right here in America are having their homes seized, their assets seized by people that don't even live here. And you have a TikToker. And by the way, this TikToker has over 300,000 followers. And he literally is telling people to come over to America, how to do it. And it's almost like he's giving a military command to do it and telling you uh, what states that you know, certain states have loopholes that you can get over here, get to a house, and it's going to take a year, maybe two years to get you out. But you talk about a seizure. You now have people from other countries over here basically now going to seize your homes. They're going to just move right in and there's nothing you can do about it. What is going on that the American people, that a squatter, uh, bad enough you have a squatter from the U.S. doing it, now you're going to have to contend with squatters from all over the world coming over and using your home as a personal Airbnb where you don't get paid. Your politicians and your churches have failed you, ladies and gentlemen. And yes, there are, there are uh, uh, um, exceptions. There are some good politicians, very few. There are some good churches, very few. But overall, your politicians and your churches have failed you, especially the churches. I hold the churches even more accountable. They've done nothing to wake their congregations up. They've done nothing to warn their congregations. They have absolutely no plan. If the lights go out, 
to do anything. Uh, you would think that if a church was awake and aware that they would have food resources, they would have emergency food put away for their congregations, that they would have plans that if something happened, that that congregation gets to the church where they have food, water, and security. Your church probably isn't doing that. Your church is probably a 501c3, and they're going to do what the state tells them to do. And if they don't, then they don't get their 501c3. They're not tax exempt, so they don't get their money. And unfortunately, too many churches are in the business of making money, passing that offering plate around, piling up the cash, uh, and not preparing you for what is around the corner. And it's very, very uh, tragic. And these people are going to be judged one day, and they're going to pay the ultimate price here because what they're doing, they've misled so many people. They have so many people that are so unprepared that they're going to be responsible for. They have not woken the people up. They have not been truthful or upfront with the people. And it is a, an absolute crime what they're doing. And they're going to be judged for it. The, 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 the man upstairs, God, is going to judge these people. He's going to hold these people extremely accountable and ask why you did not wake your people up, why you did not prepare your people. And the people will pay the price because they're not going to be prepared for what's coming. They're not going to have the training, the security, the food, the water. They're not going to have anything. Their pastor, who probably drives a Mercedes and lives in a big house, will probably fly off and you know go live in a bunker somewhere. He's probably the only one preparing while the congregation is being completely misled. Too many of these churches are just telling you uh, how great everything is. It's rainbow, sunshine, uh, puffy white clouds, and teddy bears, and everything's going to be fine. Just just have faith. Don't be negative. Don't, uh, don't be doom and gloom. Uh, just hope that everything's going to be okay. Leave it in God's hands. I'm telling you, God is waking people up, and God is telling you that you better get prepared. You have free will, you have a brain, you have a soul, you better be paying attention to all of it right now because he's waking people up, just like he woke Noah up. Noah could have just hoped that no flood was coming. He could have just prayed that no flood was coming, but it was coming and he was awake and aware and it took him, what, 100 years to build that ark, but it saved him and his family. So we can be building our ark right now and paying attention to what is happening and you can feel it right here in your soul. You know what's going on. Something is very, very broken in this country and across the globe. And so we have a duty to protect ourselves and family. And we need to be building our own personal arcs right now. What is that? That's food. That's water. That's training. That's skills. Uh, that's security. That That's partable items. That's real assets like gold and silver. Uh, it's extra gear. It's a good pair of boots. It's it's a good knife. It's it's candles. It's batteries. It's all things like that. Whatever we can afford to do, we have to be doing something. Because when people from anywhere in the world can come here and just move into your house, we have a problem. When we have soldiers being knocked down right here at our own border, we have a problem. When we are talking about you know, now a third war and things escalating, we have a problem. Uh, and we have $200 trillion of debt with unfunded liabilities. We have major problems. Your politicians and your churches have betrayed you. They have let you down. And now it is up to you to be in survival mode. Nobody's coming to save you. Here's another one. Two squatters who took over New York City home of a woman, woman found beaten to death, stuffed in duffel bag, sought for murder, cops say. 52-year-old Nadi Vital savagely beaten when she uh, discovered uh, that these squatters were inside her mother's home. Her mother had not been there in about three or four months. Upscale Manhattan apartment. So if you think this only happens in bad neighborhoods, you're wrong. This happened last week. And guess what? She just came in from Spain. She was visiting her mother in Manhattan um, and she just came in from Spain. And this is, uh, this is it for her. She's not going back to Spain. Uh, she suffered uh, severe head trauma, facial fractures, and broken ribs. And they fled in her Lexus SUV. Isn't that nice? Wasn't this nice of them? Who is looking out for the safety of Americans today? Who's looking out for your safety? Absolutely nobody. Your church isn't. Your politicians aren't. Your police aren't. You are responsible for you. I cannot stress uh, exercising situational awareness, having security, having the proper training, being extremely proficient, you name it. You better be doing it, ladies and gentlemen. You better be doing it because, I mean, think about this. A 52-year-old woman just got here from Spain to see her mother. 
stopped over and checked on her Manhattan apartment. I don't know where her mother was at the time. Maybe they have a couple properties, um, whatever the case may be. Uh, she did not deserve this. And we now uh, have an epidemic of crime, squatting, uh, you name it. it. It's so out of control. Evil is running rampant. Be walking close to God. U.S. consumers have reached a breaking point, the economic collapse.com. You know, as millions of people uh, in this country are being strangled financially, there are still people that write me and go, when's it going to happen? When are things going to start getting bad? I don't know what planet these people are on, but what was it? A week ago, we're reporting on $1,000 stores that are going to be shutting down. Uh, 150 more Macy's are going to be shutting down. Uh, according to Zillow, the monthly mortgage payment has nearly doubled since January of 2020. Average mortgage now over $2,200 a month. Uh, you need to make $106,000 to buy the average home today. Back in January 2020 of 2020, you had to make 59,000. So now you have to make 106,000. Uh, US bankruptcy uh, filings are surging. 445,000 commercial and personal filings in 2023. Uh, corporate uh, bond defaults up 80% last year. Of course, like, like we, we're talking here, crime, debt, defaults, homeless, auto insurance going up, food prices going up, the talk of another war starting. Everything is escalating uh, and it just goes on and on and on. And somebody's going to write me and ask me, when are things going to start getting bad? Um, I, maybe you live on a different planet. Maybe you're on some remote island. I don't know. But if you're living here in the United States of America, maybe you're in a multi-million dollar gated community on a golf course somewhere and you never leave your ho house. But if you do ever leave your house and you ever have to go into a city, um, you're probably going to notice a lot of tents, a lot of homeless. I don't know. Maybe you get a utility bill and maybe you've seen that double, triple, quadruple over the last uh, 18 months. Uh, maybe, your, maybe your car insurance has gone up 30, 40, even 50%. How about your health insurance? So I don't know. Maybe these people just don't have any bills whatsoever. Maybe they, they just... I don't know, maybe they just don't get it. Um, but if you're a human being and you're out here on planet Earth and you're paying bills, you've seen your bills go up substantially. Uh, this last one, hijacked Metro bus collides with cars and crashes into downtown LA Ritz Carlton Hotel. Uh, it hit two Mercedes and then hit the Ritz Carlton in LA. So now um, we have people hijacking public buses in Los Angeles, crashing into Mercedes, and then crashing into the Ritz-Carlton. Uh, it is getting uh, absolutely um, crazy, dangerous, volatile, call it whatever you want. I've never seen anything like this, ladies and gentlemen. It, this is not the country I grew up in, that is for sure. Um, hijacked metro buses, squatters, taking people's homes, seizing their properties, taking their lives. Now we have people, newcomers coming and now living uh, potentially at your house. Uh, it, just, it just goes on and on and on. And now we got warplanes flying over Taiwan. It's going to get real, ladies and gentlemen. It is going to get real. We're only in March and things are really escalating. I can't even imagine what it's going to look like this summer. But uh, look, we all have a choice. We can sit around, hope that it all goes away and that everything's going to be fine. Uh, that the debts are going to go down, the deficits will go down, the threat of war is going to go down, uh, that, that um, our bank accounts will improve, that our wages will go up, that there's going to be more job opportunity and that everything's going to be fine. We can hope for all that and, and we should hope and pray for that. Um, but in the meantime, I think that you need to take action and you need to be preparing uh, for the chance that that's not going to happen because I think that there's a greater chance that we're going to go deeper into debt, deeper into a depression. Uh, there's probably a greater chance of war than not. And it's a matter of time before things begin to really happen here on U.S. soil. There's a lot of people here with very, very bad intentions, and it's only a matter of time. We're completely stretched out as a nation. We're completely bankrupt as a nation. We're bankrupt morally, um, financially, and we're not prepared. We are a very, very fragile nation uh, economically and morally uh, and physically. We are frail as a nation. We are extremely frail. And when these things begin to be unleashed here in America, people are going to be, they're going to be 
wetting their pants. They're going to be crying. They're going to be looking for answers. They're going to be looking for help. There is no help, ladies and gentlemen. You're on your own. So uh, this is the time to be training. This is the time to toughen up. This is the time to get in a mental mindset, to get your uh, financial obligations resolved and under control, get your debts paid off, get right with God. This is it. We're getting very, very close. Have a good day. Pray for America and um, be preparing. Talk to all of you soon.